Welcome to the Empowered Podcast with Deanna Merlino, a personal development show where I will be sharing with you just how to transform yourself into the best version of you, both inside and out. From fitness and nutrition to business and positive mindset work, I'll be showing you exactly how to live your best life. I'll be keeping it as real and raw as it gets. So get ready to peel back the layers and really transform yourself under the surface because nothing is better than finding your purpose and living this life as your true, authentic self. Go grab my day by design editable worksheet so that you guys have something to follow along and hit all of your daily goals. Stay on track, push yourself to be even more successful and easily get everything put together in one place. Go download it by joining my monthly newsletter for free at www.dianamerlinofit.com. Welcome back, Empowered Fam. So we have more story time today. Uh, last week, we talked about my trip to Florida and just all the different um, ideas that popped up for me and what kind of is going to be next on the road for me. And this just happened yesterday or the day before. So this is like brand new for me, but it was just a affirmation to me that I am on the right path. And just a complete, um, I have full trust in God and the universe that what is meant for me is coming to me at just the right time. And that is one of the biggest things about manifesting is you have to just surrender and fully, truly to your core, like no doubt believe that success and abundance and prosperity is in your future and that you already have it and you're on your way to it. So before I get like two down the rabbit hole on that, I'm just like still kind of like in awe. But this is just one of those moments of many moments for me where it's like, wow, like I'm doing the right thing. I'm on the right path. And sharing the story with you guys, I I hope maybe you guys have your own moments of wow, but also just to give you something to hold on to in hopes of waiting for your wow moment knowing that if you have faith and just trust what is meant for you is going to come, that it will and stop putting out that like negative energy of um, desperation or that negative energy of I kind of believe but not fully like you have to fully submerge yourself and just surrendering and knowing what's meant for you. Okay, so going totally off track here. But I'm going to start at the beginning of this story. So I told you guys how I met my husband in the police academy, but like we are going to rewind back to that time. So I was in a super crappy, super abusive relationship. And that was the time when I uh, jumped into the police academy. And in going to the police academy, I always wanted to be a police officer. My father was in law enforcement briefly, but I also just, I'm that person who like, I want to help people. It has always been in my DNA to like want to help people. And at that place in my life, especially because of where my mindset was at and being in an abusive relationship, even though I wasn't helping myself or I didn't realize I was helping myself, I should say, because I was by making this choice. Um, But I wanted to help other people. I wanted to help other people in those situations and put the bad people behind bars where they deserve to be. And so I got into the police academy. It was probably and still may be one of my proudest moments. It was very hard for me. And I think I've mentioned to you guys, I was the only girl in the police academy in my platoon. So there was different platoons, but like of mine, um, we were the Bravo platoon. I was the only girl. So like I am a very competitive human. I wanted to make sure that I was giving it my all always and never being the one to hold us back or the reason why we would get punished for stuff. So like I went above and beyond at all times. And um as I went through the police academy, my mindset definitely shifted. And I was just surrounded with a group of men who were like big brothers to me and made me realize without even knowing, like they may not have all known my story. They definitely had an idea of kind of what was going on at home, but um, it, they just made me want to be stronger and they made me want to be better for myself. And I remember thinking very clearly, I had gotten a job offer from the village of the town that I live in now. And I remember thinking, um, because my ex was also a raging alcoholic and always getting into trouble, I knew that this was a small town that I was likely going to get a job in or I had been offered to get a job in. And I was like, I don't want my name to be ruined 
and all this hard work that I put in because I'm married to the drunk guy that always gets in trouble, that's always dropping my name. Like, no, thank you. And that was one of the big reasons that I actually got away from him too. But um, okay, so we're really going into story time here. I didn't plan on talking about all, all of these details, but like, I remember very clearly the shift happened for me. And I'm sharing this because it might help you or one person out there. But I remember the shift when we were very thoroughly going through um, the domestic violence portion. It was like, I want to say it was like a two week portion. And I, it clicked me like, I didn't realize how bad the situation I was in was in. Like a lot of times when you're in it, you have these like foggy glasses on and you don't realize how bad your circumstances are or you say it's not going to happen again or like you're just so beaten down mentally that you just don't see what's really going on. And as we're talking about it, they were talking about the um, different types of abuse, which are mental, emotional, physical and financial. And there's probably some more, but those were the main ones. And I was like, holy crap, like that's me. And I, I just, I was like, I'm done. I literally went home ended my relationship and left. Anyhow, this was, so this is that place in my life. I really wanted this job like wholeheartedly. That is all I wanted. I remember graduating and feeling on top of the world and thinking like I did it. I proved so much to myself and I'd gotten out of that relationship and I had been offered this job and because of what the chief had told me, I was certain that I was getting the job. All I needed to do was move to the town. And I did. And then all of a sudden, I was waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And it kept being like, oh, well, when this happens, you'll get hired. When this happens, you'll get hired. And then before I knew it, I was like, oh my God, I don't think I'm getting hired. And the problem with this, this was the issue is when you take the civil service exam to become a police officer, at least in my area, you have to choose what you want to do. And because I had listened to what the chief told me, I only signed up for like the sheriff's exam, which is your county, as well as like the local towns. I didn't sign up for like the state university exam, which would be like um, the University of Buffalo Police, that kind of thing. And when I realized that this job wasn't happening and it, it only lasts for three years, so it was about to expire, I was devastated, like literally devastated. I remember thinking like, I did all of this and I'm not going to get this job. And it's what I'm, I'm getting kind of emotional thinking about it, actually. Like this is, I thought that was it for me. I thought like that was my calling. And I was like, just devastated. And it was so funny how it all worked out. So normally the test was held the same time every three years in the fall on a specific date. For whatever reason, it was changed that year and it fell on the day of our wedding. So obviously I couldn't retest. So I was super upset, but then I decided like, all right, obviously God knows what he's doing. I trust that like, apparently this wasn't what I was meant to do. Like the universe says, otherwise I'm just gonna trust it. And I told myself the purpose of all of that was to get out of that relationship, to change my mentality, make me strong again, like I naturally am, build my confidence back up. And I met my husband and I was like, that's what I was supposed to get out of it. It was what it was. And then they ended up hosting another exam that allowed me to just do the university exam. So I was like, I'm going to do it. We'll see what happens. I didn't expect to get an offer because um, I didn't do as well on that exam as I had done on the first one. I did really good on the first one. But again, I was three years out of the academy at this point. Like I didn't do great on that one. And it's just harder to get hired through the state. So I kind of just like let it go, whatever. Two days ago, I received a canvas letter for the state police or for the state um, university of Buffalo. And I didn't know what to do because I always said I've gotten several job offers along the way, but like z I had zero interest in them. I definitely like would still love to be a cop. The climate of today's like policing obviously isn't great, but that doesn't scare me by any means. It's just that my lifestyle is completely different now. Like would I love to be a cop? Yes. But I am fully working from home. I am fully self-employed. I get to raise my son. I don't have to send him to daycare. Like if I chose this job, would we have 
a comfortable income in our household, yes, we'd have great benefits, but I'd have to put my son in daycare. I would have to stop pursuing all of these things that I have busted my butt to pursue and to build and they light me up and I would miss holidays and their shifts are rotating. So it's like, it would be a never set schedule of day, afternoon and nights. And like, my husband said, do whatever you want, but just know that those things are going to happen. And I sat on it and I thought about it. And I'm a projector, I've mentioned before. And like my way of discovering the answer for myself is finding friends who are a sounding board and just talking it through with them. And then I come to the conclusion myself. And out of that, I decided I was going to turn the job down, which is mind blowing to me that I turned this job down when it was all I ever wanted. And I realized that not only like it is non-negotiable with my son, like my time with my son, I don't want to miss anything. I don't want to send him to daycare. My heart breaks for people who do not have a choice. Like truly, I my heart is with you. I send you love because I don't know how you do it. But now that I've gotten to experience being home for so long, I know that I couldn't and I choose not to. Um, but also one of my girlfriends just said, like, Deanna, you have always wanted to help people and now you just get to help them in a different way. And it just clicked like, yeah, would I be helping people? Yes, but I would be missing out on helping in a different way. Like I help through what I share with my podcast. Now I'm doing Reiki healing and healing trauma. I'm putting on these healing retreats and helping to heal people. I'm healing people in my community. I'm raising awareness. I donate a ton of money to the different causes that light me up on fire. And I'm building businesses in the meantime that are going to allow me to exponentially exponentially blow all of those things out of the water. And I wouldn't be able to do any of them if I took that easy way out. In my mind, there's nothing wrong with working another an, or a normal job. There's nothing wrong with making that choice. Like it was hard. It would be easy to just add, you know, an extra good amount of money in and be comfy. But I'm not trying to live comfy. I am trying to live a statistically not capable life. Like I want to be that 1% and I will be that 1%. And this might have seemed like a long story to get to the point for you guys, but I really wanted you to understand the backstory. Like I just realized that, and this is what I was saying and say all the time, you're allowed to change. You can change whenever you want. The point is to change. The old me would have been a police officer. No matter how much I was passionate about that and still am, and I have so much love for law enforcement, I know that that's not me anymore. Like the me who wanted to do that was rough and tough and angry. And yeah, I'm still tough, but like not the same. That's just not my mentality anymore. Now I'm like peace and love, man. Like I'm just trying to figure out how to be to share love, to create love, to heal with love. And it's just mind blowing to me. And I know it was, I know it was a test from the universe. I know, but it's amazing because I manifested that opportunity. I did all the hard things. I did all the right things. And in the 11th hour, like the universe always does, it came through. What an amazing problem to have to choose. Do I want to take that dream career job or do I want to keep building my dream life as an entrepreneur? While both have their pros and cons, I had the choice to choose. That is, you can't put a price on that. So many people don't get a choice. I want every one of us to get a choice. Like my exam test is going to expire for that university test very shortly. And when it expires, which I'm going to let it expire, I don't get the opportunity to be a police officer again. And I don't take that lightly. I am very grateful for the opportunity. I'm very grateful that I was offered the opportunity. I'm very grateful that I got the experience and I got out of it everything I was meant to get out of it. And I'm just mind blown. Like at the very last hour, the universe said, here you go. Here's that thing that you wanted. Do you still want it? And I got to choose. And it is an affirmation for me that there is something so beautiful that is about to come on the other side of all of this. Like it was almost saying like, it was like, you know that commercial where that guy is like dangling the dollar? 
that's almost like what it was. Are you going to are you going to take the little bite of cheese and be comfy or are you going to keep pushing through the struggle and get the pot of gold at the end of that rainbow? And I'm choosing to keep building, keep struggling, keep pivoting, keep learning, keep growing and keep finding out who I am and finding my soul's purpose and finding out my authentic self in order to change the world and help change you. And I hope you do the same. When those hard choices come up, I hope you really dig deep and take the time to ask all the questions and look at it from every point of view and not just pick the easy road. I pray you pick the hard road, the less walked road, the less picked choice, because there's something beautiful on the other side of that. The destination is going to be incredible, and I want you all to be walking it with me. These last two episodes were so fun for me to share because they are truly defining moments in my life. I hope you can just hear in my voice how genuinely I felt them and how profound they are for me and how I know they're going to change everything. And when things change for me, they change for you. And when they change for you, they change for others. And when we all change for the better, we're changing the world and God knows it needs to be changed. So guys, just, just keep going. Keep trusting, keep believing, keep changing, keep growing, keep aspiring to be the best version of yourself. And I promise you, the bricks will continue to be laid for you one by one. The ideas will continue to come in one by one. The wow moments and the I'm so glad I waited and the I'm so glad I did it and I'm so glad I chose the hard way or the, the I, sh- I don't want to say the hard way. It doesn't always have to be hard, but the less easy path to pick it's always going to pay off. I love you all so much. Have the best day. Have the best week. I cannot wait to see you next week. And guys, please, 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 if I can just ask you to take a minute out of your day and go and leave me a five-star review, go and leave me a written review because I need your help. I do. I am nothing without you guys. And I get all these messages to my phone saying how much it sat with you and how it changed you. Share that with other people because other people deserve to hear it too. So share it in your story. Go write me a review so I can keep growing this platform and get bigger and larger and help share so many other people and make this world a better place. I love you all. Have the most incredible day and week. I'll see you next time. Thank you guys so much for listening to today's episode. If you want to find out more, you can follow me on Instagram at Empowered with Deanna and my personal page, Fit Deanna Lolita. You can also visit me on my website, which is DeannaMerlinoFit.com. Make sure that whatever platform you guys are listening on, please rate and subscribe. And this means so much to me. It's going to help get me out there to help so many other people. I'm so grateful that you're here with me on this journey of wellness and self-empowerment. I cannot promise that it will always be easy, but I do know that it will always be worth it. Stick with me and together, let's start living as the version of us that we were meant to be because the world is waiting for your gifts and you deserve to live the life of your wildest dreams and beyond. So friends, let's get empowered.